All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Devin O'Donnell, I am the VP of Membership and Publishing at the ACCS, and it is my great pleasure to be with Karen Moore and Marcus Foster. I'm going to let you guys tell you uh, tell everyone about yourselves, and um, and then we can kind of talk more about the the Tournament of Laurels, but but even maybe backing up from that, um, talk about how this all started. So I, I'd love to to kind of tell that story. Um, so, but before we begin, if I can just begin with prayer, uh, let's let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time. Pray that you would bless our conversation. Uh, thank you for the gift of language. And uh, thank you, Lord, for Latin and for the beauty of Latin and uh, for the way in which it constitutes our thoughts. Um, and we pray that you would help us as we um, discuss these things and look ahead for a great event that I think could be a blessing to so many students uh, and so many people involved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Devin. We appreciate you being here and opening up for us. Um, yeah. I, my name is Karen Moore, um, and I am the Classical Language Chair at Grace Academy in Georgetown, Texas. I've been working there for well over two decades, uh, which is, is quite odd to me to say, but it's been a wonderful two decades, not only as a teacher, but as a parent. I have three children who all attended Grace Academy K through 12 and are now two thirds of them are through university and are just doing wonderfully. I actually began my Latin studies way back in seventh grade. And it was during that time through seventh grade and up through high school. And then even as a teacher that I was involved a great deal in, in things called Latin conventions, which we're going to be getting to in a moment. But that's part of my background, um, attending them as a student, going through them as a teacher, even hosting some of these events for various schools in the Austin area. But getting to the Institute for Classical Languages and the reason why we're here, uh, several years back, um, David Goodwin approached some of us about forming an Institute for Classical Languages, an organization that would help support both teachers and students in their pursuit of the study of classical languages. And so Marcus Foster, my um, partner in crime here tonight, and Tim Griffith and I were the founding board members for that organization. And our heart and our passion was what can we do to support teachers and support students in this passion of learning? And out of that came things like the Universal Latin Exam, which many of you and your students were just engaged in these past two weeks. Bonum fortunam to you as you do that. But this, uh, because of my background and some of the passion that I had in experiencing the, the Latin conventions and the camaraderie and the joy that they brought together, that led us to this next new project. And I'm so thankful to have my dear friend. And again, Marcus, I couldn't even, I was sitting there thinking today, how long have I known you? I don't even really know for sure, but Marcus and I, Marcus is just up the road from me, just a few hours, which is nothing in Texas. And we've been good <laughs> friends and colleagues in adventures um, at home and abroad for, for many, many years. And um, I will let you you talk about um, your background a little bit, Marcus, and what it is that you're bringing to the, the convention and or the tournament, I should say, and also to our webinar tonight. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure when we first met. It seems like we've both been teaching Latin and leading, um, you know, the languages programs at our schools for quite a while. I think you may be a little bit longer than me, <laughs> um, but I also have four kiddos, three daughters and a son. My oldest daughter's in college, her first year at college. Um, and they've all attended school with me at Covenant Classical School in Fort Worth, Texas, where I've been the languages chair um, for a good many years, but really leading the Latin program there um, since 2007. Um, and I'm sure, Karen, we met at a conference at some point, uh, but I came to Latin. Someone um, conned me into taking Latin at Baylor and ended up majoring in it. And I didn't know that there were Latin conventions for high school students. I didn't even know that people really spoke Latin much um, and came much to my delight to discover that there is a community of people who speak Latin very actively. And that helped us start the Biduum, so a spoken Latin conference, convention, workshops um, in Fort Worth, Texas every January. And we're delighted that that experience is going to be um, really the first full day of the Tournament of Laurels is a spoken Latin event. And so we're very excited That's about great. that. Um, and I just, I believe that using languages actively is just a blast. And I'm excited to share that with students 
and uh, as well as the rest of the events at the tournament laurels. So that's excellent. So to be thank you, Marcus. I, and thank, I thank noticed... you so much for being here tonight. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Devin. Oh no, no, not at all. I I just was going to say I noticed that um, these events are also good for for hacks like me, uh, <laughs> who have to be corrected on their uh, use of the date of case. <laughs> and somebody Don't corrected all, my grammar. <laughs> so anyway, I yeah. I was going to introduce you guys in Latin, um, but I, I, I chickened out. So <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> you, it would have been great, Devin, but any introduction okay, is fantastic. Okay. And yes, yes, Devin, we are all lifelong learners. I love the way that Marcus and Tim challenge me, and I know I challenge them at times. So yeah. it's all a great, great camaraderie, which is why we want to have this tournament. One of the yes. inspirations for this is the times that we come together as teachers, I'm sure many of you out there, as teachers, as parents, you've been to a conference hosted by ACCS or SCL yep. or CERCI or many of these wonderful organizations that we have. Yep. And what a blessing that is for us to come together to talk about our challenges, our successes, our ideas, and to just share in this lifelong journey in classical Christian education, whether we're from Texas or California, the East Coast, the West Coast, the, the North, the yeah. South, it's such a wonderful experience. And I have a dear friend who says every year, the, these conventions, these conferences are what puts jet in my, jet, excuse me, gasoline in my jet to soar yeah. into the next. And that is really the spirit of the Latin conventions I experienced as a student and what I watched happen for my students as a teacher. Yeah. And I really want to bring, we really want to bring that kind of experience to all of you out there and to your students. And that's why we're here tonight to talk first and foremost about this event and the amazing things it brings. But then also having heard from you, many of you over the past couple of months to answer the questions that you have about registration, about preparing for events, et cetera. Yeah. And out of respect for your time and ours, because Devin and Marcus know I will just talk all night, we're going to just jump into it. And Marcus and Devin, you have full permission to interrupt me and stop me whenever we need to. It's a group effort. That, so that sounds see. great. Yeah, I just a really quick note. It may be oh, sure. help, helpful to just uh, point out that this is, you know, this event um, is in some ways sort of being modeled after uh, other events that you've you've been to i think the the jun the jcl right the junior yes. classical mm -hmm. that's certainly League, an, a, um, one of my inspirations may, maybe we could just touch on why why one of the reasons why we felt like it was important to do something that was more kind of in line with with our network of schools if that makes sense absolutely absolutely well let me go to let's see if i can find um i'll go to go ahead and go to my next slide to, to our goals, because I think that speaks to our, our goals, Devin. Sure. Um, yeah. The three goals that we had from this is one, to bring students from cl Christian classical schools together in a spirit of godly fellowship and competition. We in our schools have a sense of camaraderie, have goals and objectives, have a, a shared worldview and a purpose in our education that is unique to our organizations. Mm -hmm. And I'd say yeah. for the same reason that I can get something out of an ACCS or an SCL or, or some of these other conventions differently than I could from the Texas Classical Association, which is an organization that supports classics teachers that I enjoy and I've been to and I've even spoken at before. But this is something different because it's more in tune with the particular mode of education that we're studying, our pedagogy, and mm -hmm. our classical schools are unique not just in the teaching of classical languages, which of course um, many secular schools do as well, but also mm. in the study of logic, the study of rhetoric, the great books tradition that we have, not just in Latin or Greek classes, but in our humanities classes in history and literature. And then of yeah. course, most importantly above all, that Christ is the center of all things being taught and shared. That doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that we have Jesus in every single lesson plan, but it means that our heart is focused on making him Lord of all. And that at the end of the day, our study and our pursuits in our educational program are still a form of worship to our Lord. Yeah. And that's something that we want to be able to celebrate and celebrate openly. We want to be able to include 
um, ecclesiastical sacred texts in our programs. And you will see some of that at the Tournament of Laurels. We will have mm. worship events during our tournament um, at the HCU because we um, we will go to win laurels, but we will also cast mm. our laurels and our crowns down before our Lord and God. So yeah, awesome. these are the kind of things we want to celebrate together. So number two, our other goal is to promote the study of Latin and Greek while simultaneously um, celebrating the true interdisciplinary nature of such linguistic studies, as well as longevity. We want to go down into the late antique and the medieval era as well. My experience mm. has been, um, and understandably, you always have to put limitations on things. You can't do it all. But that right. um, the events in Latin conventions I've attended in the past were focused primarily on the classical period. Classical, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they might get down as far as Constantine, and they might mention Constantine as the first Christian emperor, but that's the extent of the integration of Christian studies, and that's the extent of the time period. And so we want to yeah. be able to go a little bit further than that, and we want to be able to, um, to integrate and to um, invite the Christian tradition openly into our event. And then, of course, our third purpose is to introduce to these same students the opportunities for a continued study at a collegiate level, specifically at universities that uh, further a classical Christian approach to study, which is one of the reasons why we're going to Houston Christian University this summer. And we'll yes. talk a little bit more about them throughout the, the evening, but they have an honors college there that I'm happy to say, not only do I have um, colleagues and friends who are professors in this honors college, but my daughter is in her senior year as an HCU Husky and has thrived to that HCU program. So I'm very impressed with it, both um, through what I know of it as a teacher, but also my experiences through my daughter as, as a parent. They're, they just do a fantastic job in this great books tradition, and they are doing a wonderful job in participating in our tournament this summer and bringing a, a wonderful flavor to it with their professors and also some of their honors college students. That's great. Yeah, I mean, maybe another, uh, I don't know if you want to add to that, Marcus, um, at all. Um, but I was also thinking, I think we want to also have freedom to be able to pronounce our V's, uh, <laughs> like properly and not, not have to pronounce them as W's, right? <laughs> Just kidding. It's I all good. Say, it's, it's all, it's all welcome. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I, I know. Even yeah, if there's I know. a little okay, bit of Karen, Texas one other... in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. One other element is we wanted to bring in maybe a little more Greek that is tip yes. than is typical at some of the other events like this. And um, as someone who's a Hellenist at heart, I, I love that and excited that for many of our students who love Greek. And I think that opens some other vistas. Right. Well. Yes, thank you for adding that, Marcus. There, I think Greek takes a more prominent position than it has been in my past experiences here at this tournament but by no means is the we would love to even do more than we're doing this year so it's, it's always yeah. a continued pursuit we're we're going to put our very best foot forward we're going to have a wonderful event and then we're going to invite uh, suggestions and ideas to make it even better the next year because this is the inaugural tournament and we certainly right. see this as being a wonderful tradition okay so also just thinking about um, how we can uh, communicate to students, you know, the opportunity here and the excitement around it. Um, it this, this we, we want to be sure that this is not just for the the more um, you know nerdy Latin kind of kid, right? I hate to say it like that. That was probably me, me, me a little bit, but this is like doesn't just for the people that are, you know, the one percent maybe in the Latin classes that are that are interested in this sort of subject, this this is a human thing. How can we how can we show the the benefit of of just gathering together and having hospitality and having games? And I think that um, even the competition aspect of it, how fun that can be, um, right? We're we're trying to we're trying to reach out to a broad array of students. Yes, and as you'll see tonight, we will see a, such a wide range of different events, both competitive and social, because we, we need a balance. We all love a good competition, right. but not everything has to be competition. But we have right. such a wonderful array of events that I, yep. I truly believe we're trying to offer something for everyone. 
Yes. Whether you are the linguistic, you know, aficionado, or perhaps you have a deep appreciation for it, but you really are more keen on, on different areas. I think we have a little something for everybody because the whole Great. point is to not only immerse in the language itself, but to celebrate, again, the wide range of effect or the wide range of influence, I should say, that Greek and Latin have, not just in language, but on, on culture. Mm. And that's really highlighted through some of the seminars that the professors at HCU are giving as well as the Got contests it. and the events that we're going to enjoy. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. That's great. Excellent. So next steps, um, what can we maybe expect a little bit um, in, in terms of detail? And then, and then eventually we want to get to how to register and walk through that process. <laughs> yeah. so. And of course, there's so much more than Marcus and I can fit into a one hour webinar, but we will do our best and we will have a QA, and a I should say at the end. So if you have questions, yep. you start writing them yep. down now. And we That's will right. also show you at the end a way that you can contact us with further questions. So by no means is this just a short window of opportunity. It's the beginning of a conversation that we invite you all to partake in. So first thing I want to show you then is our website. Now I would recommend, and Devin, I don't know if you can put this in the chat box for sure. people to find the link, but if you go to instituteforclassicallanguages.org, and it's a long word, but it's it's all one word, instituteforclassicallanguages.org, this is the home page. And you will see, as I mentioned earlier, some of you will recall the Universal Latin exam, you're involved in that, but you'll see down here at the bottom and also across the top, the word tournament. And if you click on that, I invite you to click on that. That is our tournament website. And I think it will be of help to you to keep that in your browser because I'm going to mention it a few times and reference a number of things there. I'm sure Marcus will too, as we go through the evening. And it'll also allow you to browse through it and perhaps come up with some questions that you wanna ask specific things about. But as you can see here, this is an event for the Institute of Classical Languages produced by the ACCS Institute for Classical Languages. And our motto is Literarum Lumen Archedat, which comes from Cicero's Pro Archia, which means let the light of literature approach. And uh, one of our mottos, our passions in the ICL is to really help teachers and students embrace the literature of the Greeks and the Romans and all the lovely things that are highlighted within those works. Because it's more than just building vocabulary and chanting a moa masamat or um, the agape equivalent, but it's also about diving diving deep into the themes that this literature produces for us. And the one we're highlighting this year is De Amicitia, about friendship, which comes from a work by Cicero, but is also touched mm. on by Aristotle and others. And the virtues that, that uh, excuse me, that friendship produces or should produce, I should say, which is also mm. one of the highlights in our oratory passages but I uh, I digress. So That's great. when you go to that page, click on tournament, and then you will come to this next screen. Um, shout out to our lovely um, designers and engineers and our web people. This I just, I love this screenshot. It's just so gorgeous. Yeah. And you can see, of course, the register button. We'll get to how to register in a little bit. If you scroll down on this page, you will begin to see everything, all the opportunities, the seminars, the speakers, all the things that we're going to order, uh, excuse me, to offer. And we'll try to highlight some of those as we can. Um, but also, if we don't touch on something you want to hear about, please do ask in the Q&A. The site for this event this year is Houston Christian University, which is nestled in the heart of Houston, Texas. And again, it is a, a, it is a Christian university that really has a commitment to Christian education and their honors college will be working with us. In fact, the first day on day one, when you arrive on June 25th, one of the first opportunities you get to have as you come in and get your packets and your things, uh, all, all the things, all the things that you get when you when you come and in. Swag. All the swag, yes. And then we will escort you or show you to your dorms. And just to clarify, we have a dorm for the guys and the guys chaperone. We have a dorm for the girls and the girls chaperone. And as my dear friends, there's blue and there's pink and never shall there be purple. So we have all those things set up. 
So after you check into your dorm, we actually are going to have members of the Honors College, some of the students, give tours of the university campus. And on the university campus, there are actually wonderful art museums, Bible history museum, Americana museums that you can explore on that first mm. day. And then that evening, once everybody's come and settled in and found their way around, we will have our first gathering together that will, of course, give everybody a lay of the land and the what's to expect and the agendas. There will also be a time of worship for us together because that's what we want to do. We want to keep, to set a tone, to keep a tone, to keep an atmosphere that is Christ-centered, Christ-honoring, and even um, at times worshipful. So that's HCU. The campus map is, is right here for you to look at. It's also, you can get to it right quick on the website for the Tournament of Laurel, so I won't spend too much time there. Although I will point out that most of our events are going to take place in this central area. You'll hear about the Holcomb Mall and the movies and the fun social events we're going to do there. I know some of you have asked me questions about it. So there's a cafeteria called The Ball. We'll talk more about that and your food options there. But then just north in this white space, there is a strip mall called The Pillars. And so pre preempting a question, I know that I've had moms, dads, parents who were dropping off and picking up. This is a strip mall right here that has lots of wonderful places to eat, including Chick-fil-A and Chipotle and Whataburger to, to shout out a few. So there are lots of things, nice, easy, close to campus to help all of you out as you come in, settle in, or pick up your students on the way out. Okay, um, do we wanna go ahead and go to safety or do you wanna talk through some more events? Um, yeah. Marcus, did you have any uh, thoughts on the events that you wanted to to chime in about? I think. Um, uh, yes. Well, we could, I think yeah. um, most important about the events, uh, at least I know for, for my own community, is to hear more about how fun these events can be, both competition mm -hmm. and social events. So, Karen, I think you're going to get into that in just a minute. But I know some of our schools may be in my school's position that they've never sent students to JCL and students may not know what to expect and how fun it can really be. Yes. So I do hope we yeah. get to that more of that in a minute. So actually, let's go ahead and jump into that. So here is, I've jumped to the website that you're seeing. At the big top, you see some um, spotlights from our Instagram, our Facebook, our social media, but then down here we have the overview. So we'll, I'm gonna pass registration because we're gonna come back to that in a little bit. But you'll see here at the events, you can click on the daily schedule if you wish. I'm not going to go bit, bit by bit because that would just take us the whole hour. There are also sure. synop seminar synopses. So on Thursday and Friday, we will offer seminars by gentlemen like Lou Marcos, Chris Hammonds, Austin Freeman, David Davis, all who are professors at HCU. And one of the advantages I must say to having my daughter who I call my, my spy at HCU is Absolutely. that as we had synopses and abstracts come in, I said, hey, can you tell me about this professor? Have you had him? What do you hear about him? And yeah. all four of these gentlemen are absolutely great. Uh, so I think you're going to, and each one of their topics is also very engaging. They're not going to just sit and lecture and talk at you. Each one of them has an activity and engaging seminar to bring you into. Lou Marcos is going to act out the role of Odysseus and from the Odyssey. Chris Hammonds is going to meet students in the amazing Center for Law and Liberty on HU's campus, which is a replica of Independence Hall, and talk about the classical founders. And your students will actually get to sit in the chairs that are replicas of the ones wow. that Washington and Franklin and Jefferson sat in and engage in that with the conversation. We have Freeman talking about the connections of Dante and Virgil, and Davis talking about the influence of Latin on Beowulf. So each wow. one's to be fantastic. So those are the seminars. Yeah. You can read the synopses. And then on day two, Marcus, why don't you give an overview of the Spoken Latin Day? Because this, I, I love that we're doing this on the very first full day because this brings everybody together. It breaks down sure. walls. It gets us talking. And that's really one of our desires is to really get these students to engage with one another in the fun fellowship of speaking. Yes. So like I mentioned before, I think spoken Latin is so much fun. Uh, I know most people may hear that and think, what? People speak Latin? And, or maybe, oh, I don't know how to speak Latin very well. That sounds really intimidating. And so the way we've 
gone about this is we're going to sort people by ability level. So if you have, if you have a student who's done one year of Latin, they're going to be with students at about the same pace as them. If you have a student who's had five That's, years of Latin, you're, yeah. they're going to be at a table with people who've had more Latin vocabulary, syntax, et cetera. And then what happens is our those who present, the facilitators, uh, typically use R, a mix of art, text, and simple questions to generate discussion. And then at the tables, the discussion can continue uh, amongst the people of like ability levels. So right. if, if you can imagine that, this is a non-intimidating environment where, and we've done seven Bidua, where there is a lot of laughter um, students have a have a great time at this, um, and so I I this is a great thing to do the first day, um, and this will will continue through several sessions of different activities. There will be games involved. There will be breaks. There will be snacks, um, and uh, everyone will both get to use the Latin they know, whatever that is, and to to grow in it a little bit. So they'll get to learn yeah. from their friends, learn a little bit from the teacher. And, and do things in a very active, engaging way. I love that. Yeah, I mean, this the spoken Latin is is kind of a muscle that is often neglected. Uh, and so it it takes, you know, practice to work it out. And then, and then you realize, like, oh, I can do this. You overcome that initial, like, I don't know how to say anything. And then all of a sudden, you, your sphere of fluency yeah. begins to expand in, in ways that you don't expect. So that's really exciting. Yeah, I will say another thing that I really love about this format is the facilitator gets to model the kind of simple phrases, sentences, questions, and discussions that the students can continue. Sometimes yeah. there might be um, a little little drama involved, maybe a little music uh, or sure. something. And so yeah. it, it really is, um, I always find myself thinking, ooh, uh, this is really going to stretch my brain. Uh, and then yeah. I get into like, oh, this is so much fun. And so I, I'm just excited for the students to get to experience this. Karen, did yeah. you want me to talk about more how to prepare? Or did you want to save that for another? That's a great question, point? actually. Yeah, we were going to do that at the end, but go ahead and okay. jump into it. Okay, I'll just jump into it now. Because so, I know it's a question. Um, yeah. And I know that, again, the spoken Latin might be new for some folks. And we've we've thought of them. So so we got a good on on ramp experience for them. But I'd first say, yeah. what do you need to prepare? Well, nothing. Your students come at whatever they have and jump in with yeah. that. So there, you don't need to prepare. But for people who want to be more ready or are excited about this, or maybe feel a little nervous and want to want to do some, uh, do a couple things to get ready. Well, let me give you a couple of suggestions. First of all, um, whatever curriculum a student or a teacher is using, using in the classroom. You can always do some of it aloud. So whether that's reading aloud um, or asking simple, simple, simple questions to which there's a one word response that's in the text, uh, doing that aloud starts to exercise that muscle of speaking. Mm. And so that's a that's a good thing to do is read text aloud. Um, another thing I would recommend to students is that you talk to your teachers about it. So parents, you can encourage yeah. your students to talk to their teachers or tutors um, because teachers have resources about this. Even if that's, that's not their preferred pedagogy, they know things. They know about where yeah. they can find good resources that perhaps jive with the curriculum that's being used. Um, and then I, I would also recommend that students or teachers be so bold as to try some very simple spoken Latin in the classroom. Um, that can be a lot of fun and talking student to student. I've, I've heard for years that students, um, parents report, develop languages at home, develop Latin um, yeah. conversations at home so their parents can understand. So that, you know, that could be fun to try. Um, but certainly uh, teachers and parents, I would I would even invite those who are coming as a chaperone or teachers, those of you who are coming with your students. This is a great moment to observe your students learning your subjects uh, live mm -hmm. and and in action, and I think it's a great opportunity for some professional development uh, to really appreciate uh, this kind of pedagogy and engagement. Um, yeah. I I think there's nothing better I can do as a teacher than watch other people teach my discipline and watch the magic happen. So you mm -hmm. can see how fun and effective spoken Latin yeah. can be in a classroom setting. Uh, I did right. also want to mention there are videos on our ICL uh, Institute for Classical Languages resource page. So if you go up there and see resources, 
uh, Karen, I don't yeah. know if you can you can hover over that on your your on the website there. But within those resources, there are some spoken Latin videos. So you can see Tim Griffith do a session on gerunds. That's a little more advanced. Um, yeah. You can see some games. There's Mendox, which means uh, liar. Um, and maybe you've played a, a similar game to that in another language, but that's a that's a very fun game that's that's modeled for us in a video and many other resources that can be a nice gentle on ramp to uh, spoken Latin. Right. Thank you, Marcus, for reminding us about the resource page. That's great. Yeah. I also just want to remind everybody: uh, enter in your questions. Uh, we're happy to to take those. So make sure you guys uh, don't. Don't hesitate to do that um, as we as we're continuing to to present. So um, keep going, Karen. Okay, so we talked about the twenty fifth. That's when we're checking in and exploring the campus. The twenty sixth is when we have our Lingua Latina Activa Spoken Day of Latin. We're all getting to know each other and becoming very comfortable speaking in Latin. And by the way, there will be some pockets of time over the following Thursday and Friday to have Latin game activity so that we can continue the speaking on. It doesn't have to stop on, on Wednesday. Yeah. We want it to keep going. But by no means do you have to speak Latin the entire week. <laughs> so let's get into the competition, the competitive events. And those are what are going to dominate Thursday and Friday. The first category are the academic contests. And these are 50 question multiple choice. Each contest is going to um, really, there's there's one contest, there's one event sheet. But then in the same way that Marcus said, hey, when you come into Spoken Latin, you choose your level. When you sign up, yeah. you're going to tell us your level. Are you a menores, a beginner? Menores means the minors, the youngers. Are you a beginner? Are you a mayores? You're kind of intermediate. Or are you the optimates and you're the advanced? And we have some indications on this in the website on how to tell which one you are. Typically, nice. you know, if you've gotten to the subjunctive, then you probably cross over into mayores. But the optimates means you're do you're reading the literature. You are living and loving and, and engaging with that literature on a regular basis. But look at the different competition categories we have. We have grammar. We have etymology. We have quotations. So that kind of gets mm. really into the meat of the language. And notice that some of these, well, all three of these are in, offered in either Latin or Greek. So you get to choose your language as well. But when you take that test, you're taking the same test as the mayores, the optimates, the menores, but you're only scored against people in your level. Right. So you might come out of that as a menores feeling like, mm, I don't think I did too well, but this is not your classroom test. An A is not 90% or a B, we're, we're not doing that. It's All just right. it compared to your level. So you might get 10 or 15 right and be first place for a menores. You don't know. Yeah. So just come and do yeah. your best. Notice we also have a literature. This is all in English, but it's based on epic poetry, Iliad, Aeneid, um, Ovid's Metamorphoses, even um, could go down into a little bit of the um, uh, the Argonauts and some, some other things too as well. I forget the list. It'll, it'll be on there. We have ancient history, which is Greek and Roman history from early down to the death of Caesar. So if you're the history buff, maybe your Latin and Greek aren't up to par, but you're the history buff or you love the literature or geography. Now this last one, reading comprehension, again, you can take it in Latin or Greek, but that's where you're presented with a passage and then you're asked questions about the passage, which some of you see in the national Latin exam, if you take that exam, or even like the CLT exams where they're having, giving you a passage and asking questions about it. That's what you're seeing in the reading comprehension piece. Another, now let me, one quick thing, again on the preparation, teachers are going to ask, well, how do I prepare for this? You don't. The beauty of this is that this is all designed to celebrate what you are teaching and reading with your students in your classical Christian education. So it's all based on that. There is not a rubric, there's not a syllabus, mm -hmm. there's not a study guide. Well, I should say they're, they're very generally so, but there's no reading assignment and you're going to be tested on this book. It's not about that. It's just right. about engaging with the things you're already learning. It's supporting that. The oral contest, and you can see we have them divided up into the orators, the prose, and the bards, the poetry. This is where 
you memorize and you recite a passage. Again, you can choose from Latin or Greek. We have some that are secular. We have the Iliad and the Aeneid in here. We also have some fun fables from Phaedrus and from Aesop. And we have some pieces of scripture. A lot of, in a lot of these, not all of them, but in many of them, you will see the celebration of Amakitia, of friendship. Now, mm. if we're going to go ahead and start kind of mixing preparation in with our contests, a great way to do this, uh, teachers and parents, is to go ahead and start memorizing now. I actually, in my classes, I value memorizing and reciting in Latin. First of all, it's one of the canons of memory, and we're a classical school. We need to be building that mm. canon of memory, and it doesn't yes. just have to be for the Bible scripture memory class, and it doesn't just have right. to be for your history famous speeches, but it can also be for the language, for you to practice engaging with it orally in a different kind of way, and this is also kind of training them for that great day of, of thesis, right? So yeah. you can go ahead right now and start memorizing those. And then if you click on the P any of these PDFs, they'll give you more just detailed descriptions of the contests. Um, the fine arts, here's where we start to really branch out. You can compete in uh, competitions related to graphic arts, to music, to theater. Oh, Each one of them has to be based on a classical theme, engaging with classical history or literature. And some of them, for example, music, you do need to sing in Latin or Greek. Um, for the arts, you do need to be able to cite a passage that you're painting or work of art represents. There are a number of different kinds of art you can engage in from sculpture to mosaic to different types of painting and drawing. Again, I will let you go read those because we don't have time to cope through all of them. Uh, sure. Theater, graphic arts, all of those. We do have an Olympica, which we've started kind of calling the Lauralia oh. just to keep with our, our laurels theme. But this is going to be, you know, celebrate the tradition of athletic competition and the, the great post-Hellenic games that the ancient world mm. celebrated in. And again, you can read about that. Um, how to prepare, go outside and run. <laughs> go run everybody and, and get, get in some good exercise. So that's it for the competitive events, but we don't want it to all be out com about competition. We also have, because we really want to foster a fellowship, is some non-competitive social events. One that I'm very excited about is the movie night Under the Stars, where we'll all gather on Holcomb Mall after sunset, and they have a giant movie screen that they bring out, and we will watch a movie with a, a classical theme to it um, out under the stars at night together. We're gonna have um, some board game nights with perhaps this Latin Scrabble tournament. There are recreational opportunities. There's a sand volleyball court. There's ultimate Frisbee out on Holcomb Mall. And then of course the seminars that I previewed earlier on in, in the session are all, all wonderful opportunities for you to engage in a uh, with your friends, with new friends in a non-competitive or the competitive level is up to you at that point in time. I know sand volleyball, yeah competitive out there <laughs> it will not be for points so with that in mind let me talk very quickly about participants and teams because this also gets to some questions i know i've heard from different parents and teachers as i've been corresponding with them now you can and we encourage you to come as a team that could be your school i teach at grace academy so we're putting together a grace academy team but it could also be a group of friends. Maybe your school isn't sending a team, but you have three or four friends in your area that you want to, to come with, or perhaps mm. a homeschool co-op. You have other friends that you know that are taking Latin or Greek, and you want to all come together and make your own little team. Fantastic. Do it. Perhaps you're in a situation, you're at your homeschool, or perhaps somebody else in your school wants to come, but you still do. Well, we want you to come. So come as an individual. You can register either way. But here's the thing. You do need to have a head chaperone for even one person. And you do need to have, if you have multiples of 10, you need to have at least one chaperone for every 10 people. And this is for two reasons. One, obviously, is for shepherding and just helping students around campus. But the other thing is that we as parents and teachers we are a, a body of volunteers who are partnering together to put on this event. 
So when chaperones come, not only are they there to be responsible for, watch out for the students that they are bringing, but they are there to help put on these events. So perhaps proctoring event, perhaps what you're signing up to do that time is, to, or one day is to go into a classroom and you're just going to proctor the academic contests, which means you're just passing them out. You're giving the basic instructions of how to bubble in things. And then you're clicking picking them up and taking them to the grading room. Or maybe you're helping, perhaps you like art and you know something about art. Maybe you want to come and be one of the art judges or same thing for music or same thing for theater or perhaps help run the Olympica. But this is going to be a, a gathering of volunteers. And Marcus and I, we're volunteers too, right? We're paying our way, we're paying for our students. Well, we're not paying for them, but our students are paying to come in and we're, we're there to work, we're there to serve. And that's how these types of events are carried forward. So it's a community of students, but it's also right. a community of us as teachers banding together to, to work through these events and to enjoy them ourselves and to cheer our students on as they engage in them. So when you get to registration, which we'll talk about in just a minute, you will Great. see that spot for chaperones. That, that we always encourage that the head chaperone be a teacher. If they know Latin or Greek, fantastic, because we have some events where we definitely need that help. But perhaps you're a parent, you have a homeschool student, and your Latin isn't that great, but you're still chief mom, chief educator. Come, be the chaperone, be the teacher, and we'll help you find a way to participate that's within your comfort zone that will bring you joy um, with the abilities, the God-given abilities that you have. That's awards. Great. This is so important. So our competitive events, you will have first, second, and third place awards as an individual for how you perform in relationship to those who are present in each one of the competitive events. Mm -hmm. Those points, if you are part of a team, those points go into a team pot and they will go towards the tournament trophy. And the team with the greatest amount of collaborated points, combined shared points, they're the ones who win the tournament cup. That does not prevent someone from coming in as an individual, participating and winning with ribbons and prizes as an individual. Please come, we will cheer you on and we will welcome you with open arms. So that's the awards. Again, you can kind of read the details. Um, Moving on to, I think I've already kind of covered chaperones lodging. We're in the dorms at HCU and you can read a lot about the HCU lodging on here. So I won't go into that in too much detail, but I do want to take a moment then and talk very quickly about the, pardon me, about the campus security. Cause that is another mm. question I know we've had and yeah. go to that slide. So HCU and again, as I said, I have a daughter here and I love my daughter. I'm protective of my daughter. So you can bet your bottom dollar that I checked this out before I had her enrolled at Houston Christian University. HU has its own police department certified by the state of Texas. You can find them easily on the campus website. The officers patrol that campus 24 seven and there are police call boxes all around that campus. So they take their security very seriously. There is also a very tall iron gate that surrounds the entire campus and its gates close every night at 1030 PM. Mm. So they're taking safety very seriously. That said, we encourage every student to employ good common sense because evil doesn't always stop at the gate and evil will sometimes mm. find a way in. So be vigilant. No one should walk around campus at night by themselves. Yeah. Always go out in groups. And that's just common sense, everyone. And no one should leave the campus. And I would say that for any event, this is all about togetherness. If you need to leave the campus, make sure that you are going with a chaperone Mm -hmm. And that you're there, there's not really much that you're going to want to walk to off campus other than, you know, Chick-fil-A is right there. Yeah. But that would be in a vehicle. Additionally, the state of Texas and HCU campus have regulations on tournament volunteers. So all of our tournament volunteers will undergo a background check. That includes the chaperones. This is very light. It's very standard. It's something that any, even most of our schools would do as well. If we have volunteers coming on our campus at Grace Academy and engaging with our students, they undergo a background check. 
In addition, there is going to be a training session. It's a very easy online training session for all of our volunteers on child safety and child protective policies that each one of us will engage in. And if you sign up, if you register, if you're coming as a chaperone, we will send that information to you. And HCU has made it something that again, is very easy and yet very important yeah. for the safety of our kids. That's good. Well said. Yeah, Dan. we really want to. I'm oh, so grateful ahead. that there's such a premium put on the safety of the children and that there are policies yeah. and procedures in place to make sure everyone's safe and make sure chaperones are vigilant, as you said. And I'm feel great about my students coming to the event for that reason, especially. Yeah, I was going to echo that. For sure, I think that if it's not one of the top questions that we would, uh, you know, uh, assume, I think it's definitely just as as parents, right? <laughs> it's definitely on, on our mind, and and uh, you you yeah, you can't have an event without addressing that. And and I like uh, I'm very grateful for the the way and the uh, comprehensive way it's being addressed. So. Great. Agreed. Good news. Agreed. Yeah. Well, I'm going to very quickly say we're on registration, and Devin, I know we need okay. to get to our Q and A. Yep. So I'm yep. just going to hit it's the fine. highlights, and again, y'all ask questions if you need more. But so, in step number one, as I said earlier, is to create a team or to register as an individual. Make sure you have a chaperone. They will tell you on the website. Again, you need at least one chaperone for every ten students, and we've already touched on chaperone duties. Registration is on the website. It's extremely easy. It's so intuitive. I, I'm not a, a techie person, guys. I, I always joke that I'm better with dead languages than modern technology. And it's yeah. so true. But if I can register myself and I made myself walk through it, and I've, I've already registered my team, I promise you can do it as well. The cost is Great. $500 right now. If you're one of our first 80, there's a limited time special. $550 by the time our regular registration ends on April 15th. That's less than two weeks away. And after that, it yes. goes up to 575. If you are living in the Houston area and you're commuting, you're not sleeping in the beds uh, at the dorms, then it's 450 for you. Right now, you can also register with a deposit of just $100. If you register right now, you're only putting out $100. And that $100 per person is fully refundable if the event is canceled for any reason. So again, yeah. there's really a no risk, no risk registration going on right now. So I would encourage you to do that. And I would encourage you to do it soon to take advantage yes. and get that $500 price. There's, there's my infomercial sales pitch. No, okay. it's good. That was very well and done. And then yeah. um, you're probably wondering, well, how do I sign up for the contest? The registration is just to get your foot in the door and say, hey, I'm coming. After you register, then we will send you a fillable PDF that allows you to register not just one person, but your entire team teachers, which is, is a good point too. If you're creating a team, then teacher, head chaperone person, you register your whole team. So yeah. get your ducks in a row That's and then sweet. register all your little ducks. The If you're coming as an individual, then go for it. You can register as soon as we get off this webinar. And then again, after registration is processed, then you will be sent a PDF form where you can sign up. You're not 100% committed, but it gives us as the tournament coordinators the ability to know what contest rooms are we need to know how big those rooms need to be because all of those are the are the final details that we have to work out with HCU before we welcome you all onto the campus. Okay, we've already kind of talked Great. through how to prepare. So we will just say thank you all for your attention. And Devin, I think we're ready for Q&A. Yeah, we got, we got a question here. I just also want to remind everybody that this uh, video itself will be packaged and shared with schools. It'll be on our website. It'll be on the ICL website. And we'll put it on our YouTube page as well. So uh, we want to make sure we're, we're getting the message out in all the ways we can. Uh, okay. Q&A. Here we go. Are there, this is from Abigail, Abigail Hicks, are there separate tournament cups for the various levels of minores, mayores, and optimetis? That is a really great question. I think there is definitely a first place winner for each one of those levels. We have okay. not yet ordered the grand prize for each level, but I will say that the winner of the Optimate is the highest level. They have the biggest, shiniest trophy. Nice, yeah. So um, then 
all the points are not just going to one single tournament cup. There's going to be other prizes as well, but there is a bigger prize for, it sounds like the winner. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, I think Devin, I have a question. Can I, can I yeah, jump in real quick please, before we move on do. to some others? So Karen, I remember you sharing a story with me that at one point, um, going to events like this was so important to your school community that they wanted to make sure athletics would not somehow get in the way. Uh, that that's how much fun, how much <laughs> of a culture building, uh, engaging event uh, these kinds of things were. And for those of us who may not have experienced that, could you share a couple stories of students and, and how this impacted them, what yes. their experience at these events is like, um, and what it what it does to your school culture? Yeah, well, that's a great question. At Grace Academy, our veteran students will still tell you that Latin club was our first team sport because mm -hmm. we were young. We were too small to have, you know, a football team, too small to have a basketball team. But with the, the Latin convention, it gave them something to come together as a team to engage in, to cheer each other on in. And it even included the athletics. So they were they were very cute because they were saying, hey, in the world of, of Latin nerds, we are the fastest, we are the most athletic. And so they, they really enjoyed that. And I can tell you that as new heads of school might come on, I can rem distinctly remember the board telling them, whatever changes you make, don't don't mess with Mrs. Moore and the, the Latin club. That's, <laughs> that's you know, you, you all have kind of your, your sacred things, right, that you that you don't mess with. And, and for our school for many years, it was that classics club. Because again, it just, it gave them this unique opportunity to come together and to cheer each other on and to celebrate what they were learning. They also just found it so encouraging to interact with kids from other schools that they didn't know. And these mm. other kids, and because we were in, engaging with secular schools as well, these were kids who actually chose to take Latin. Their parents weren't even forcing them to. And they would all have these wonderful, fun stories about engaging in what they've learned. And then Marcus, that, that also reminds me of the time that you and I, as our schools were now K through 12 schools and we had our senior trip to Italy and we met up at a pizza shop in Italy, your school and mine. Mm. And the way they thrived and just sharing about, oh, you're doing thesis too, so am I. And hey, what yeah. did you think of Beowulf? Did you like Beowulf or Dante better? And the conversations that they would have, it was again, just this wonderful um, bit of encouragement in, in what they were doing, as well as, as, as an opportunity to, to reach out and to engage with other students. That's a great point. I think sometimes our students can be so siloed in their experience at their mm -hmm. own school and being able to go out uh, to see that this, one, that there's a lot uh, of uh, shared experiences uh, that, that they can uh, have with with others from other schools and around the country and so forth. There is a kind of um, esprit de corps that I think is sort of communicated in these moments. Um, and I love that you're doing the theme friendship. I think that's mm -hmm. also so fitting. Uh, it's gonna be, I mean, because that's how some of these memories are made. I think sometimes students just think friendship happens or it's just a, it's sort of like, uh, a, you know, a chance encounter but that there there's actually no there's actually ways in which you can make good friends <laughs> you know it is you have agency in this thing called friendship uh and you and there's and these are ways to do that these are moments that you're you're creating memories you're creating shared experiences uh that are embodied and and that are going to last going forward so this is this is a great theme um and i'm super excited about it yes well <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. Did you want to add anything else? Uh, I think we're done with the Q&A. We really only had uh, one main question. I don't see any okay. others, which is well, fine. I will say, um, if you're like me, your questions are going to come about 10 minutes right. after this is over. So can I point right. out, please, on the screen, you see an email address, tournament at instituteforclassicallanguages.org. And if you email that tournament address, we've put, we've instituted that. We've just actually just been recently turned on 
or recently created so that we have a place to take your questions. So please do keep those coming. That's great. Any, any two last words? Yeah. Oh yeah, two additional thoughts I have. One, one of the reasons I got so excited about getting involved with this many years ago as we started the planning was even though I hadn't seen firsthand some of the the good fruit I have now of it of seeing students compete and things like this. Um, I, I knew it was valuable and I wanted to get on the ground floor. And I think there is a there's something unique about this first inaugural tournament mm -hmm. for teachers, parents, and students alike that we all yes. get to be a part of shaping what this might become. Yes. And yes. and that's that's uh just amazing. So I want to invite us to think about that. The other thing I, I thought was was good to think about is I know as a as a teacher, as an educator, and as a parent of students who are being classically educated, um, we can feel pretty lonely, just like the students we mentioned sometimes feel right. a little siloed off. Um, and going to conventions or uh, different events where there are like-minded people is just absolutely life-giving. And yes. I, I'm this event is that. Um, yeah. Um, maybe maybe with a few exponents on the top. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, for me, this is why I want to be involved is I want to be a, I want to give my students the opportunity to to feel that culture forming community that happens when you're competing and socializing, living and sharing together yeah. um, and forming an identity of a movement that's really bigger than just any one of our schools. Uh, but yeah. also I want to I want to rub shoulders and be sharpened by other teachers mm -hmm. who are doing some of the same things, facing some of the same struggles that that I am. And again, let that, let that culture move us forward and build friendships that, uh, uh, that affect us all beyond just this one event. So I think those are two things worth considering and, and why it's, it's really a bargain and something we're spending our time doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said, great parting thoughts. And with that, I think we will conclude. We will be done. So uh, thank you again, both Marcus and Karen. Uh, thank you, Devin. to be with you. Yeah. And um, yes, valete, amiki. Valete. Valete.